Hey, how's it going, guys? Good morning. So, we have two pages to do today after our reading. If you do them before, you'll have no idea what you're doing, okay? So, make sure you finish the reading first, then you can watch this video, okay? It's the opposite of how we've always done it. I know, right? But FYI, you're finishing reading today. So, when you're done, you will come to page, can I get it? Ha ha, 182, there you go. You'll come to page 182, and you will go to develop vocabulary. This isn't the only page we're doing, okay? We're doing two pages, and they are connected. They go together. So in narrative nonfiction, authors often describe events using domain-specific words, or words that are specific to the topic, right? These words help the reader determine the relationship between the events and people in the text. Okay, so specific vocabulary, it helps us what? Determine, that's a good word, or figure out the relationship, that's good to know, between the events and people. Okay, so these words, these vocabulary words, help us determine or figure out the relationship or connection between the events and people in the text. Okay, so they help connect them. Got it. My turn. Why? No, Mr. Herring, that's not why. That's right. Please read correctly. Thank you. Write the meaning of each word. Then use each word in a sentence that explains how the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor affected Zinni's life. Okay, so what those instructions just meant were you are to write the definition for these three words. You have descent, internment, and spectators. Now, you will write the definition here. Remember, you can go back in the story and look up the definition. If you're using the online version, you can just press the word and find the definition. Um, so after you do that, you need to write how the word relates to Zinni's life. You're not writing a definition. You are relating back to the story on how this word affects his life. If you need help, go back to the text. Go back to the story. You can see how that word is used, and then you make your own sentence. So let's say our word was desolate. That is one of the other vocabulary words that we're not using. Desolate, the definition of desolate. If I don't know it, I can go back to page 18. I can go back in, and I can find desolate. So empty, lonely, and unhappy. Okay. So let's see where it is in the text. Do, do, do. Ah, here in the desolate middle of nowhere. So empty, lonely, and unhappy. All right. So what I'm getting from this is, you know, Zinni was sent to an internment camp during World War II because of his, ooh, ooh, was it because of his descent? <gasps> Maybe. So he was sent to this desolate place. So what I would do is I would write this definition, empty, lonely, and unhappy, and I would say Zinni was sent to a desolate internment camp for World War II. So that would be using it in a sentence describing something about Zinni's life. That happened, right? We just read it. So that is what you are doing. Definition and sentence related to Zinni's life using the word. Moving on. You will then go to check for understanding. So this requires you to look back at the text to answer the questions. That means you read a question, 
You think about the question and then you go back into the text. So number one, what characteristics tell you that barbed wire baseball is a biography? Oh, well, um, huh, I don't, uh, oh, well, I remember that, you know, a biography uh, is to inform or entertain. Um, well, while reading this, I mean, have I been entertained? Yeah. Well, but have I also been informed about Zinni's life and about the internment camps during World War II for uh, Americans of Japanese descent? Yeah. Oh, so that, okay. Well, that's a characteristic. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, uh, is it written in third person? Oh my gosh. Yes, it is. Okay. So I could probably write at least two sentences there to answer that question because those are two things I've noticed. If you need help, guys, you can go all the way. Bear with me. Bear with me. Ha ha. You can go all the way back to page 53. And look at the biography anchor chart. Also remember a chronological order anchor chart. So this has a whole lot of important things on how you will be able to uh, answer this question about Zinni's story. Number two, why does Marissa Moss include dialogue in a biography? I wonder, why would she show what Zinni said. Why would that be important? Hmm. Think about some reasons why you would show, why an author would show how someone spoke, why they spoke. Think about that. Number three, why did other people from the internment camp help Zinni make a baseball field? Hmm. That's a good question. And number four, Analyze the way Zinni approached his baseball field project. What does that tell you about him? So these are the questions I would like answered. Once you are done, snap a photo of both sides, upload them, and submit as done. If I do not get your photos, you won't get a grade. I'm sorry. You need to make sure that you upload your photos. If you have a problem, please join me on the Zoom and I can help you fix it. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later and have a great Wednesday. High five.